What's up guys? I'm back and this time I'm painting Din Djarin from The Mandalorian. Now this miniature poses a whole new set of problems and challenges. You want to make his Beskar armor have that nice chrome metallic look, which is difficult to pull off on such a small scale while still making it look somewhat realistic. I tried to think of the different ways I wanted to approach this mini. Did I want to go with a non-metallic metal approach and try and paint the chrome type look? Or did I want to go with a true metallic paint? Luckily, Michael Kay in one of the Facebook groups I follow, Star Wars Legion Painting, posted his recipe. I'm going to show you how quick and easy it made this mini and how much it made it look like the actual Mandalorian from the television show. Now before I started, I went ahead and prepped the model. I cut all the pieces from the sprue and I was careful to sand all the mold lines away. This is particularly important on the helmet itself. There is a mold line that runs across the top of it, and using this primer, which is a gloss black lacquer primer, everything shows up, including all the scratches and mold lines, so be sure to polish it as best as possible before priming. The gloss black primer will help the chrome look. After that, I took my bottle of Alcat aluminum lacquer and mixed it up thoroughly. This I'm going to be putting into my airbrush. During this step, you want to apply the coats as even and smooth as possible. The smoother the finish, the more chrome and metallic mirror looking you're going to have your Beskar. Take your time and do multiple thin coats if possible. After you've given your first coat ample time to dry, apply a second or third coat as needed. Make sure you have a nice even coat when you're done. Now we're going to mix up a wash to put over the armor. To do this, I start with a few drops of Nulm Oil. Then, I take a few drops of Agrax Earthshade. Finally, I add a few drops of water from my cup to help thin the wash down even more. I don't want it to pool at all and I only want it to be in the recesses and give a slight shade over the entire model. With the wash mixed thoroughly, I now begin to layer it on. I'll cover the entire helmet here pretty evenly with this wash. Once the entire thing is covered, I'll dry my brush off and begin to wick away the excess pooling. The goal here is to give the entire helmet a slight tint and fill in the recesses, but you don't want any awkward coffee staining or pooling on the model. Now I'll do the same with the rest of the armor on the torso. Again, I'm applying a nice liberal coat all over the model, and then I'll go back and wherever it pulls up, I'll begin to wick away the excess. And with that, the Beskar is mostly complete. Now, we need to prime the rest of the model to accept the acrylic paint we're going to be putting all over it. For this, I use some flat black acrylic primer from Vallejo. We want to cover every square inch of the model that isn't Beskar, so begin framing in the different plates as carefully as possible. You can use multiple thin coats if needed. Due to the metallic finish and extremely smooth undercoat, 
Sometimes you'll need multiple thin coats in order for the primer to build up. Just make sure you're keeping the primer thin as you don't want too thick of a coat to obscure the details underneath. Now that we've got all the Beskar plates framed in, it's time to begin painting with the acrylic paints. For the base coat, on the pants and undershirt, I use German Chocolate Brown by Vallejo. Again, we're framing in all of the Beskar plates and creating a nice, even coat all over the model. If your paint is thin enough, you may need two coats to accomplish this. When you're done, the model should look something like this. Now that I've got my best car complete and I've got a base coat over the hard to reach places, I'm going to put the cloak on. For this, I'm going to scrape away some of the paint where I'm going to glue the cape back on. This will help the cape adhere better. I apply a dot of super glue and this is where I'll put the cape on. For the cape, I used a tiny piece of blue tack underneath it to hold it while I painted it. Then, when I went to put it together, I had one spot that didn't have any paint on it, so it would adhere to the spot that I scraped off. You can see here why I base coated his legs and back before I put the cape on. It just makes it easier. I start with just a normal thin coat of black from Vallejo. For this, I cover the entire cape, making a nice thin coat to make it as smooth as possible. I try to work fast and keep the paint thin because I don't want it to fully dry before the next step. For the next step, I'm going to add a little bit of glaze medium and start to slowly mix in German Grey. The glaze medium will allow this to blend a lot more seamlessly with the base coat. Now, using long, smooth brush strokes, I'm going to begin painting the black German Grey mixture onto all the high points on the cape. I'm careful to follow all the contours of the cape and where the light would hit it first. I leave just the recesses unpainted. The key here is to make smooth sweeping brush strokes. You don't want any unnatural or squared off lines with your paint. Now I'll mix in even more German Grey to make the color even lighter, and then I'll do the same thing but I make my brush strokes thinner, staying to the top of the ridges on the cape. If you work quickly and leave the paint below wet, it will start to blend itself together. This technique takes a little bit of practice, but I find it makes for super smooth blends without too much different gradient layers. You can see here when dry how smooth the transitions are. I also chose to leave the underside of the cape that matte black to create some contrast.
Now I begin to paint some of the Beskar armor pieces like he has in the show. On his hips, he has a little bit darker blue pigment to it. So for this, I use some thin down blue from Vallejo. Again, I put a little bit of glaze medium into the paint itself to make it thinner. I want it to cover, but I also want it to keep that shiny finish. For the armor on his torso and stomach area, I used a little bit lighter blue from Vallejo, the Azure. Again, I thinned this down so that way I kept a little bit of the metallic showing through. Now I begin to work on the boots. His right and left boot have subtle different tones to them, with the right one being a little more green and the left one being a little more brown. So for this, I thinned down some green and began applying it to his right boot. This particular color I used is Refractive Green from Viejo. Now, for his left boot, I began applying some flat brown. You can see compared to the German chocolate brown, it has a little bit more orange and lighter tones to it. Now I go back to my German gray color and begin to paint in his gloves. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to begin to highlight all of the areas that I painted in the German brown. For this, I use a chocolate brown color, focusing on all the ridges and folds in the clothing in which the light would hit. Try to imagine where the light would hit the clothing and reflect causing a lighter spot. You want to paint all of these raised edges this lighter color, leaving the recesses the original chocolate brown. Now, let the model thoroughly dry, and it should look something like this. Now, I begin to go back and detail his bandolier and belt. For this, I use that same chocolate brown. I want this to be a slightly lighter color than his pants. Take particular care painting along the different shells and items on his belt and bandolier. You want these to remain that shiny chrome, while only painting the leather straps that run across the center of them. You can do the same thing on his boots. You want to take your time and use tiny brush strokes. You don't want to have to go back and paint the silver again, as you've already got that incredibly smooth finish on there. With all of that done, it's time to give it a wash. Let the model thoroughly dry, and now we're going to apply an Agrax Earthshade wash over the entire model. Again, we'll apply the wash pretty liberally, but we want to wick away all of the spots where it pools up unnaturally, particularly on the Beskar plates. You don't want coffee stains or weird spots on these flat areas. With this completed and dry, it still leaves a very glossy tone. For this, we're going to knock it down with some matte varnish. With the matte varnish, I'm going to put a light coat over the Mandalorian's entire body. I'm avoiding the cape here and also the Beskar plates. We don't want to take the shine off of the metallic areas. It 
as you can see already, that looks a lot better. You don't want the weird, glossy tones on the fabrics. Now it's time to paint his fingertips. For this, I chose Medium Flesh Tone from AK Interactive. It just happened to be a paint color that I had that was similar to what I was looking for. Take your time detailing in around his pistol. For this, I used two light coats in order to get proper coverage over the darker German Grey gloves. Next, for the tiny pieces of armor on the gloves, I used Rackarth Flesh from Citadel. Frame in the details as best you can. If you make mistakes, you can always go back with the German Grey and frame it in better. Now, I'll quickly hit it with some Agrax Earthshade to add depth to the armor and gloves. After that has dried, I go back to that light blue color I used earlier, and I paint the little triangles. Finally, I go back and detail some of the little things on his belt. The little clasp on his pouch here, and the grenades on his side. For this, I just chose a quick sky gray. Finally, I need to give Mando his pistol. For this, I used Lead Belcher. If you want to give it a quick wash, you could throw a little bit of Null Oil over the top of it. Throw Mando on a base, paint the rim black, and it's done. If you need basing ideas, I've got one of those videos linked above. I'm actually really excited about how this came out. Truth be told, sitting on the table, it looks like it should be straight out of the TV show. The Beskar armor turned out with that perfect chrome type look without being super obnoxious and without drawing all the attention away from my other miniatures. Overall, I love this recipe. It was quick and easy to pull off. I'd highly recommend it. If you like this video and you wanna see me paint up his companion Grogu, stay tuned to the channel. Like and subscribe so you don't miss it. Because during that video, I'm going to be giving away a limited edition Star Wars Legion Grogu miniature. All that made possible by a subscriber of this channel who is able to pick up the miniature and send me two copies. I'll paint one on the stream and I'm going to give one away. Stay tuned. And until next time, keep on creating. So I was filming this tutorial and I originally painted up my Din Djarin. So what happened is I had my camera mounted to this bookshelf that I have next to my painting station. The only problem is on top of it, sits my compressor for my air gun. So I'm sitting there painting, filming away, and I look back and the entire time, the footage is just like this. It looks fantastic. So I actually had to paint up a second Mando just to get the airbrush, the chrome painting, absolute disaster. Highly recommend, 10 out of 10.